Do you ever have kitchen fatigue? Maybe a little food deja vu? Like you've been eating the same foods on repeat over and over? Well, that was me last week. And now I need to do another round of meal prepping. So I decided I need to mix things up. So I'm going on a spice hunt in my kitchen cabinet. I know I have several bottles in there that I've either never used or rarely used because I keep shuffling them around to get to the basics that I use over and over. <laughs> so today is the day I'm going to find them. I'm going to use them in ways that remain to be seen at the moment. After I get some spice and spo, I'm going to get out the meat spits and bites bins and come up with a meal plan for the remainder of the week. But first, let's take a look in the pantry because I know I have some condiments in there that look terrific on the shelf at TJ Maxx or Home Goods, and then I proceeded to never use them for a hot minute. So let's check that real quick. All right, so here we are in my laundry room slash pantry. We'll do a little dig in here and see what I can come up with. Hopefully we're not digging too far in. Oh, good, right there. Okay. These two bad boys. Pumpkin honey mustard. Oh, that sounds great. Why have I never used and that? A ham glaze. Oh, I see something tasty in my future Hopefully right this here. This video will give us all some ideas on how to change things up in the kitchen. So let's get going. Okay, you guys, time for a look inside my spice cabinet. This has all the usual spices, baking products and a few bottles of oil hiding in the back there. I've got gravy mixes, backup spices, and then the upper two shelves are serving bowls and platters. This pantry really could use some purging, but I'm not going to attempt that today. And let's just get all these things pulled out of here and we'll go over it on the counter. And let's just go over this really quick before we drill down. Over here on the left, this is all baked goods. So I'm not going to go through this per se, but I do want to take note of the expiration date on a few things here because now that my YAs have flown the coop, I rarely make pancakes or anything like that. I got these on a BOGO, I want to say, while the YAs were still here. So, oh, good. This one's good till August of 24. And this one... September of 24, it expired in December. I think I might try to come up with some kind of a bread that I can make with this and freeze a couple loaves. And then this Bisquick, June 26 of 23, and oh, that thing's almost full. Maybe I'll put it in a jar would be the best thing to do. Um, Penny over at Open Hand Farms gave me that tip of putting things in jars so they'll last longer. And I've got several big jars, so I might as well, right? Now let's get on with the spices here. Most of this is standard stuff we all cook with on the regular, but I do have a few odd ducks that I rarely or never get to, and that's what I'm on the hunt for today. First, let me say, a shout out for my friend Kelly over at Kelly's Preppy Kitchen. If you want to see a seriously impressive spice arsenal, go check out her channel. This girl's spice stash will blow your mind. She's also a lot of fun. You'll love her, I promise. All right, let's see what we've got to work with here. I'm hoping to come up with at least three different spices that I normally use and then make some meals for the coming week with those. I'm going to start with this top rack. I don't get in here very often because there's spicier things here. Y'all know I'm a spice wimp. So, you know, cayenne pepper, chili powder, turmeric. Ooh, smoked paprika. I haven't used that in a hot minute. Lavender. I think I bought that thinking I'd do something fancy with it and then proceeded to do nothing with it. Let's see what it says it expired. Best Buy. I think it says 2019. Chipotle powder. Mmm. But I did the harvest chili not too long ago, so. Cajun. Did that last week. Down here. I'm going to get rid of everything on the front row because these are my standard go-tos. And then dig towards the back here. Oh, cardamom. Hmm. That's a maybe. Mm. 
mustard seed. Mm. Might be able to incorporate that into some kind of a marinade. We'll see. Ooh, smokehouse maple. Yum. Hmm. And regular smoky Montreal steak. That sounds good too. All right, so we cleared that rack. Here's one that I have definitely cooked with in the past. I love tarragon, but I haven't used it in, oh, I don't know, at least a year. My favorite way to use this is on green beans, but I'm going to set this over here too and think of something maybe to do with that. So I've got my cupboard cleaned out and I'm going to put this guy back, get him out of the way. All right, so this tub here, these are my backup spices for all my go-tos, you know, Italian seasoning, garlic salt, garlic powder, yada. But I do have a couple odd things here in the front that I wanted to take a look at. This is a lemon pepper TJ Maxx or something along those lines. I'm going to give that a sniff and see if I can come up with something to use that for. I've decided I should never buy another bottle of spice at the ubiquitous TJ Maxx home goods because I just never end up using them. Not that they're bad. I just, I don't do it. So, all right. This is just a lot of little, mostly what I call Christmas spices. Ooh, pine nuts. Oh, I forgot these were in here. I hope they're not bad. These things are hard to come by. Let's see. April of 2024, you guys, and I love pine nuts. Hopefully they don't taste bad. I'll have to give them a taste test. These have gotten hard to find. I don't know if it's the supply issues or if it's just, you know, one of those things, but. All right, cumin seeds, sesame seeds. I should put those in my bottle of sesame seeds. I'm buying in some stuff, you guys. I'm glad, as boring as I am. <laughs> Every time I watch Kelly's channel and she gets into her spice rack, I feel like I need to step up my game. This really is just all basic backup, so I'm not going to dig through that with y'all. I've got a few things that I had tucked over on the side because they were so big, and I want to go through those real quick. More pumpkin pie spice. Can you ever have too much of that? I don't think so. This is a homemade spice because I love the Aldi Mediterranean seasoned salmon, but sometimes you can't get it. This was close, but not quite there. Maple butter. Mmm, yum. I definitely need to think of something to use that in. I don't know if it'll be this week, but soon, soon. Okay, let's paw through these things here. Most of these I got at Aldi. Smoky dry rub, that sounds amazing. I know I have a couple of larger pieces of beef and pork in my deep freezer, but I haven't done the inventory of the deep freezer yet. That's probably gonna be coming up next week. So I'll save this guy for when I have a big old piece of meat out to do some dry rub on. Ditto for this. Oh, what is that? Oh, Cajun seasoning. Black and seasoning. To me, these are kind of the same, and I love those things. So I'm, I'm not going to get into those right now because, you know, that's kind of... Oh, more Chesapeake Bay seasoning. This is why you need to go through your spice cabinet because you find out you've got duplicates and know to never buy those things again. <laughs> season salt, nothing exciting there. This is one of those that you can either season food with it or do like an olive oil and herbs and dip bread in. And I got that artisan bread going. So I think I will leave these out and do a little olive oil and dipping sauce instead of my usual butter, butter, butter. Mm, yeah, I'm glad I saw that. When I lived in Miami and I fell in love with Cuban food, specifically pork roast, they put me onto using this. And if you've never seen this in the store or ever tried it, be on the lookout for this. Heavily cover a pork butt in this like way more than you think you need roast it low and slow and your mind will be blown how good this is kicking chicken finger licking well that sounds kind of fun another tj max yep spice aisle weakness moment you will have to try some of that this week getting to the end here guys now this was a Publix clearance find i sent one of these to my son for Christmas, you know, just a little tuck in, but sea salt, maple bacon, mmm, 
I'm going to have to try that on something. I don't know what. I'll have to look up a recipe for it. These are going back in the cabinet. Dillweed. I don't use that very often. Maybe I can come up with something on a veg with that. These are sesame seeds. And then last and kind of least, this is just a big backup of chickabouillon. It was dented when I bought it and got it on clearance for a dollar, you guys. Fajita seasoning, you know I do fajitas all of the time. I got this online, it's organic, and I've got to say, I don't care for the organic McCormick's as much as the regular. I don't know what it is they have in the regular, but this tastes kind of blah compared to the regular, just FYI, guys. And then, because I use a lot of cinnamon, I finally decided I need to upgrade <laughs> because I was always having this on my monthly shopping list, so I'm going to refill this one that I keep in the, the lower Lazy Susan rack. And then this is cornmeal. Well, it expired in 2021, so I probably need to give that a sniff. But because it's been in this jar, it might be okay. You know, I basically just use it to sprinkle on the bottom of a pan for pizza or something. Okay, so back to the action here. This little tub is full of gravy packets, taco seasoning, chili seasoning, you know, the usual stuff. But I'm going to take a quick peek in here because... I think there are a couple of things in here I may want to have a go at. This container is from Dollar Tree in case anybody's curious where that's from. It's perfect for these little packets. I've got some ranch dressing, Italian dressing mixes, lots of taco seasoning. Ah, this Baja Fish Street Taco Seasoning. I've got a couple packets of these. I got them on clearance at Publix and I've never tried them. Same thing with this chorizo taco seasoning. And I love a good chorizo. So maybe this is a way of turning like ground turkey or ground chicken into some quasi chorizo tasting stuff. That's definitely something I'll have to try down the road, but not today. So these are all the spices I'm gonna be working with this week. Now I'm gonna pull out the meat spins and see what we can come up with that will pair with these spices I've got lined up here. So I've got the meat spits and bites bin out again. This is about a third of a package of bacon. I'm not gonna use that this week. This is some leftover teriyaki pork and rice. I'm just gonna kind of whip through this. This is some black beans, some taco meat, some P.F. Chang's chicken. We're just gonna keep digging through here and I'll come up with several items to pair with those seasonings. I know I've got a, a few things in here that really, you know, aren't going to work because they're already pre-seasoned, but I'm hoping to come up with some basics that I can throw some things together with rather than pulling out, you know, solid meats out of the regular meat bin. I really want to clear through this bits and bites bin as much as possible. You know how I am. So I'm going to just pick through here. And then we'll go over my game plan. I definitely want to get some ham out to go with that ham glaze. I'm really excited about using that. This is some salami. Ah, here's a package of ham. This will work well. I'm gonna get out some of those sweet potatoes that I grew, that I've got in storage, maybe some regular potatoes to go with that ham. I can't wait to try so the that. the ham glaze and the pumpkin honey mustard. I've never opened either one of these. I think I paid around five, six dollars for each. I'm gonna try chopping up the ham and pairing it with the sweet potatoes and a russet potato. I'll probably roast it all in the oven sheet pan style. And this pumpkin mustard, I'm gonna grill some of these brats that I have here, just in a grill pan along with the steak that I pulled out. And I'll put this mustard on the side. You know, no biggie. And I think this is my last little filet that I got on clearance at Sprouts. 
So I'll put this in the grill pan with the brats and I'll season this with the Montreal steak seasoning that I've set out. I'm gonna give this bin a wipe out and then we'll get on with things. I'm getting this meat spits and bites been pared down, you guys. It's really going down, I swear. <laughs> of course, I'll fill it back up again like I always do, but, you know, meat's in, meat's out. As long as we keep it moving, that's all that matters, right? Now I'm going to get out the big meat bin. This is packages of meat and see what I can find in here to pair with some of those spices. All right, so this is some flounder. It's already pre-seasoned, but I haven't had fish in about a week, so that's sounding good. We'll see what I can do with that. I've got a little bit of shrimp left, and I'm definitely gonna give that a go. I'm gonna put this Baja fish taco seasoning on it, even though I'm not gonna make tacos out of it, probably. I like the seasoning itself. That's you know really all I care about. Until I've got something to go with most of those spices I've pulled out. Some of the spices I'll just have to wait until maybe next week because I can only meal prep so much for one person, right? This is some teriyaki tofu that I got on clearance at Sprouts. I'm really interested in giving that a try, but not this week. On with the digging. I'm really happy to see I still have a package of two chicken breasts in here. I don't think I'll use those this week because I've got enough other things going that I'll defer using those. But definitely glad to see I've still got those in there. I've still got this shrimp scampi kit in here that I got at Sprouts on clearance. But this is kind of pre-season, so I'm going to skip that this week again. But it's definitely got to go on the list in the next week or two. This is another third or half package of bacon that really should have been in the meat spits and bites bin. But I didn't have room for it, so now I do. That's a good thing. So now I'm going to have two partial packages in there. But you can never have too much bacon, so I'm not unhappy about that. This is cube steak that I got on clearance at Walmart a while back. And I really need to get to using this up, but not this week. I think I'll put that on the menu for next week. And obviously it'll be more than one meal there. <laughs> got some inexpensive chorizo, just a couple other things in here, a package of ground beef, but my goodness. Well, look at this. A big old ham steak, I guess you'd call it. Maybe I'll use this instead of that other package. This little package is small slices of ham that I really bought for like an Eggs Benedict. And my idea for this ham glaze quasi casserole is, you know, cubes of ham. So I think the bigger ham will work better. And I'll put this smaller package in this bin. Got some tofu that I need to try using. I really do have a lot of different things, but I get stuck in such a rut, you guys. I don't know why I do that. I guess maybe we all just go to our easy things so we don't have to think so much, right? I'm going to get everything put back in here that I'm not planning to cook with this week and get this bin put away. Now I'm going to get out my veggie bin and see what I've got to work with here to pair with these different dishes that I'm going to whip up. This bin is getting very low, <laughs> but I am going to behave myself and skip going to the grocery store. I figure if I spend an average of, say, $70 a week on groceries, for every day I stay out of the store, that's $10 I'm saving or deferring spending, right? Okay, time to give this a little dig through. I got this salad kit on clearance at Sprouts a week ago. You know, 75 cents. It's kind of a cabbage and broccoli, carrot slices. It's supposed to be a stir fry, but there's kale in here, etc. It's really looking more like a salad to me. So I'm going to check that out, see what kind of condition it's in, and I'll use that for salads for work. I've got this bunch of celery 
And I have that chopped turkey breast that came out of the meat spits and bites bin. I might have to make some more curried turkey salad just for the beach this weekend. Got some wrinkly limes, about a third a bag of carrots, one bell pepper lap from my last run to Aldi, half an onion from last week's meal prep, <laughs> and this lemon that is so shriveled it almost looks like an orange. That's got to go. So that's it for this bin. Now I also still have this big tub of mixed greens that I got on clearance at Sprouts last week for I think 99 cents. Let me just give this a quick look and see if this is even salvageable. Ah, some pieces look fine. Others look kind of yucky. And it's got a little bit of a whiff of a hmm. I may be able to saute this. We'll see. I'll give that a pick around later and decide what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to cut the salad kit open right now and see if this is usable so I can figure out what my game plan is. Okay, time for the sniff test. It sure looks like it's still good in this bag. The expiration date says February 25th. Smells fine. Looks fine. I think this is going to be perfect for a salad for a couple of days. That's good because I don't have much of anything growing out in the yard except for some romaine lettuce and that doesn't hold up very well during the week so I'm glad this looks like it's going to work out. I think I'll do a mixed veggie stir fry to go with the seafood that I have planned. I'll use this pepper, some carrots, and see what else I can come up with out of the freezer. All right, you guys, we're going to go with the veggie stir fry for the seafood. I'm going to do a fiesta corn to go with the taco bowl. And I've got green beans in the freezer I can pair with the steak and the brats. And I'll do the salad for during the work week. Okay, I rummaged in the veggie bin off camera. And you guys... I don't know what it is about not having much fresh produce that makes me panic and think I need to go to the store because I am veggie rich. I got this broccoli and this zucchini out of my veggie bin. These were fresh veggies that I chopped up and threw in the freezer to keep from letting them go bad. So those will round out my veggie stir fry nicely. I'm not shy on veggies there at all. And this may be my last half bag of green beans. I don't know, until I do my deep freezer inventory. But these I will saute with some of this tarragon and a little garlic to go with the steak and the brats. I'll have the stir fry, I'll have the corn, and then the salad for work. So that will be plenty of veggies for the week. I don't think I need another thing here. In case you're new to my channel, one thing I like to do is after I've pulled everything that I'm going to use for meal prepping for the week, I put it all in a bin in my refrigerator. I've got it on this Tupperware lid with a little towel under it because these are all frozen items except for the celery. And, you know, as they thaw out, they might start to get a little wet from defrosting. So I'm hedging my bets I'm there. I'm almost out of that whole wheat bread that I made last week. So I decided to make some artisan bread. And I accidentally doubled the recipe. <laughs> There's a story there. Never mind. But I have enough of these dishes to use some for lids. And I'm also making a whole loaf like normal because I've never made the minis. I'm not sure how they'll turn out, but I'm excited to see. I think they'll be okay. So I managed to get all these in the oven without the lids falling off. Yay! Because these loaves are smaller, I'm going to give it 20 minutes and then take the lids off and let those cook another 15. And the bread is going to do 30 and then 15. And I'll see how it goes. Well, here's how my bread turned out. I'm really happy with these. I've never tried making little mini loaves before. Those things are so stinking cute. I think I may do that from now on. The big loaf turned out well too. So my doubling the recipe by accident turned out to be a happy accident. <laughs> and I'm loving it. 
I so wanted to make it to the beach today, and the weather was just being really tricky. <laughs> I went anyway, and now I'm starving. Now I'm back home and going to meal prep all of the stuff that I had planned today when I went through the spices. So I'm going to bang this out as fast as I can. It's exactly 6 o'clock, and I don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I'm going to start by putting the potatoes on this pan and roast them for about 20 minutes. Then I'm going to add the ham because the ham's already cooked. And this pan's gonna get the fish and the shrimp. And meanwhile, while that's in the oven, I'll be doing the stir fries and whatnot. So I'm chopping up these sweet potatoes that I grew in the garden. I'm so excited to eat my own sweet potatoes. All right, this is our ham glaze. We're gonna give it a go. Oh, I don't wanna go too crazy with it. So one big heaping tablespoon, or serving spoon, I just say. So I'm gonna put this seafood into bake. Two minutes or so that I'm planning on the ham cooking, and then we'll see if it needs a little longer. And we all know shrimp doesn't take long, so we'll see. Again, I'm going in with a, a heaping serving spoon full, maybe one and a half tablespoons. I'm gonna give this a stir around and let it sit over there until my potatoes are cooked 20 minutes and then I'm tossing this in with them. I busted open my ginormous 10 pound bag of rice that I got on clearance, gosh, probably a year, a year and a half ago. Next up, I'm gonna marinate this little steak in my Montreal steak seasoning that I pulled out. It's got a smoky flavor. More stir fry from the veggie bits and bites pan. I'm going to use about half that zucchini because there's only one of me. Same thing with this broccoli. I'm only going to use about half of it. Ooh, maybe. Maybe a little more broccoli. Maybe all the broccoli. I just have to have my greens, you guys. I have to. This is going to get some of the lemon pepper that I pulled out of the spice cabinet, as well as some olive oil and garlic. My favorite part, the taste test. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm gonna get a little sweet potato, a little ham. Mm -hmm. That's good. The only thing that would make it better is a little better quality ham. That ham's a little meh. But you know, when you buy a, a fat slab of ham in a package, what are you gonna get, right? But that glaze with the sweet potatoes and ham, yes. So if you see any of that stuff, pick some up. All right, so here's my hour and a half of meal prepping. It's so silly, I told myself a half hour. I don't know why I do that. I should tell myself two hours, and then when it only takes an hour and a half, I'll be happy. <laughs> but just to review what we've got here. The steak, which I will make some green beans to go with later in the week. And I'll add this tarragon to the green beans and probably some sliced almonds. I've got this flounder, the shrimp that I seasoned uh, with the Baja taco envelope, the brats, which I'll slice up and pair with this pumpkin honey mustard. I've got the ham, sweet potatoes, and russet potatoes with the ham glaze out of the pantry. And I whipped up the spread this morning. I've got another loaf in the fridge. These veggies that I stir fried with the lemon pepper, you guys, those turned out so good. I am shocked how much I like those. And all I added was the lemon pepper and a bunch of minced garlic. I didn't add anything else. Those are delicious. And then these are my upside down salads. And some plain rice. One side benefit of making meal preps is that you end up with resistant starch. You know, they say if you cook your potatoes and your rice, then cool them off, throw them in the fridge and even if you reheat them later, it's still resistant starch. So that's a great side benefit. I decided to just throw the taco meat and the black beans back in the freezer because I really doubt I am going to need those. So that's it for my meal prep for the well, week. Well, I enjoyed that spice hunt, you guys. I hope you did too. I really appreciate you coming along with me. And if it gave you any ideas on condiments or spices you haven't used in a while, please comment down below and let me know. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.